Hello, and welcome to this video on angular momentum. In this video, I'll just be talking about what angular momentum actually is, how we compute it, and mentioning a little bit about the condition under which angular momentum is conserved. So, there's a whole video dedicated to the fact that you could basically get rotational motion out of linear motion, and you could just make some substitutions and come up with most of the equation. And so, not surprisingly, we're going to use that linear motion again to guide our understanding of what's going on with rotational quantities. So let's think about rotating around in a circle that has some radius r. As we do so, we realize that at any given instant, what we're doing, of course, is moving tangent to the circle. The particle actually wants to move off in a straight line. If there were no force attracting it toward the center, that's actually what it would do. So, can we take this and understand something about something deeper about the physics of the situation. So if we're moving in a straight line at any given instant, that means we've got some linear momentum, which we know how to calculate. It's just mass times the velocity. And the velocity here is our tangential velocity as we rotate actually in a circle. So that's fine. We've got some tangential momentum. But can we use that to say something about an angular quantity just like we've introduced angular velocities and things like that, so that we're not always just talking about the tangential motion of particles. And the way that we can do that, actually, is by taking a cross product of our position vector with respect to our rotation axis crossed into our linear tangential momentum vector. So L, the angular momentum, is going to be R cross P. Now, this raises an interesting question because in the earlier mapping question, we said you could map a bunch of equations under certain rules. And if you take the original p equals mv equation, and you apply our mapping rules, which says that p goes into l, m turns into i, and v turns into omega, then you should get l equals i omega. So that's clearly not what we've written there. Now, this is not a problem. This is much like in the torque video. There's actually several ways of finding the torque, right? We said torque is I alpha. That's what it does. And you compute it as R cross F. So this shouldn't be too surprising, but you might be wondering, are these two consistent? And indeed, they are. Because just like in things like finding the center of mass or finding the moment of inertia of an object, where you imagine adding up all the little bits of mass, that's what this one is really talking about. You've got some mass which has some momentum at a point r away from the axis. So that's one tiny bit of mass, perhaps, as part of a larger object. But then if you want to talk about the larger object as a whole, you'd have to do this fun game, of course, of adding up or integrating over all of the mass that's present, basically all of the momentum that's present, doing this cross product for each piece of the momentum, taking this radial vector for each location that you're taking that um, tangential momentum from, doing that whole cross product, adding it all up, and at the end of the day, what you will get is the total angular momentum of some rigid object that's moving and rotating with some omega. And at that point, indeed, what you will arrive at is the fact that L is equal to I omega. So that mapping immediately introduces what angular momentum is. It works the same as linear momentum. Linear momentum, again, was talking about sort of resistance to changing your motion. This angular momentum is talking about resistance to changing your rotational motion. So you like to actually do, you do like to conserve that momentum as much as possible. And we can talk about the criteria. And here again, that mapping still works. This is the power of that simple mapping where you change all the um, various linear quantities into their rotational counterparts because we already established a condition for the conservation of linear momentum. We said linear momentum P is conserved as long as there's no external forces acting on our system. So what's the angular equivalent of linear momentum? Well, that's L. And the only other thing that's a linear quantity in there is the force. What's the angular equivalent of force? It's torque. And if you just do that mapping, you get exactly the right condition for the conservation of angular momentum. Angular momentum will be conserved any time that there are no external torques acting on your system. Okay, so in summary, angular momentum 
It's a lot like linear momentum. It is talking about how much you resist changes to your rotational motion. In fact, it's so much like linear momentum, it's actually even based on linear momentum. It is a cross product of your position vector with your instantaneous tangential linear momentum. And for a rigid body, you basically sum over every little contribution of momentum from every little piece of mass of your object. When you do that, you arrive at this expression, L is equal to I omega. And a very simple conservation um, criterion, if there's no external torque acting on the system, momentum is conserved.